Hey people, how are you doing? Broken Puppet, welcome back to my channel. Got another fun one for you today, it's how to draw a peony flower. It's a really nice, beautiful kind of flower that works pretty much at anything, just like from normal art to tattoos to anything you can imagine. It's just a really fun one to do, and to be honest, they're fairly simple if you understand the structure of them. So to start off here, I'm just going to use pencils, I'm going to use markers for these. So I'm going to start off with a rough circle. Like this. So sketch it in. And consider this like the center of the flower. And now what you would want to do, you don't want to do the dead flower straight and then do everything kind of sort of in line, like 90 degree angles. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a bit of an angle. So it's going to be facing a bit this way. I'm going to have my first kind of flower that's going to fit in this kind of sort of triangle shape. And I'm going to start building off around this. So it's very important to make a very first, you know, kind of base kind of flat, you know, leaf. So I'm going to have this kind of fit in this kind of area, like I said, just here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with a nice kind of curvy base. I'm going to create this line at the bottom, curve around like so. So you're kind of creating almost like a cup for it to sit in. You know, once you create your cup, you can kind of sort of start shaping it up to the kind of way you want it. So I'm going to bend this up. I'm going to create this nice kind of sort of like little overturn. You know, you want it very kind of circular. You want these kind of nice little sort of circle turns. And you don't want to get everything on the same kind of level. So it's going to go here. This one's going to go here. This one's going to go a little bit lower. And this one's going to curve there. So you've got this nice sort of shape for it to sit in. And once you're on the first one, you start building up and you basically want to keep creating layer after layer, just kind of circling around. So I'm going to create one that's going to kind of sit out here. So it's going to curve upwards and this one's going to sit inside this one so it's going to curve around like so so this one's going to have two little curves like here and you can see it's going to sit in this and it's kind of working around this circular shape and once i've got that done i then want to create one on this side bring this one maybe a little bit higher for a bit difference i'm going to create this down get this one a bit higher this one a bit smaller kind of in there you, know, you don't want to kind of feel like it, you know things are kind of repeating too much so you want to kind of get a nice kind of sort of shape where everything kind of feels a little bit different and now at this stage you can have one here where it kind of curves around and you kind of seal it in or you can have it open and the inside part kind of feels like it flows out of it i'm going to have this one almost kind of a little bit kind of closed so it's going to curve here like here and this shape's going to curve around like this so but it's nice kind of clay shape and it kind of feels this bit kind of enclosed and then inside here is going to be the main part of the flower um, for this really simple i'm just going to use circles you know, it's European kind of circles, about the same kind of height, kind of fitting in the gaps, like so. It's just a really nice, simple way of doing it, and it just looks really nice and pretty. And once you've got this done, you're going to start building off of this now. So the idea is you want to sort of branch off in most sort of directions, but you want to have like a you know, sort of set kind of direction where it's kind of going to go. So for this one, I think I'm going to have my height is going to be around here, and it's going to curve down a bit like this. So it's going to have this sort of shape to it. And I'm going to have it flow off in this kind of S shape. So I'm going to start with the first one, I'm going to curve this up, it's going to curve around, and then what you're going to do is create this S shape, and I'm going to curve off this, I'm going to create a few semicircles, curve back into this. So create this sort of shape just here, and then this is going to kind of go into an overturn, so it's going to twist and turn around the other way now. So this is like the outside part of the leaf, and this is going to be the inside. So you've got this shape, then to do that, you're going to curve around it. I'm just going to create some nice kind of curve patterns off of this. Now I have some nice big circles, sometimes maybe a little one. You know, kind of mix it up, kind of mix and match between different sort of shapes. So this one's going to kind of branch out here, and then now this one's going to branch out this way. So I'm going to have this curve line come out this way. This is going to curve, another little bump, and curve this way outwards. This one's going to curve out. I'm going to create my bump. I'm going to curve here, and what I might do is I might have another little kind of overturn where it's going to go like this, a little curve this way, and then just coming outside, I'm then going to curve this line into it like this. So you just create this nice kind of little overturn pattern and might put a little secondary circle just there to join to the edge. Now it's quite a long one. So because I've got a long one, I want to have a few branches around it that are a bit shorter to make sure it doesn't feel too, too elongated in my opinion. So I'm going to create this another circle shape just here. And this one's going to curve in just here. So I'm going to have three little circles and when it gets here, I'm going to have to sort of turn in. So that's it. it's a much shorter one than this one. So it kind of feels like it sort of surrounds it. And I'm going to have one coming in from here. So I'm going to fill in this kind of gap bit around. I mean, what you can do when you get the inside, you can create these kind of little, little sort of loop sort of shapes if you want, which does look quite nice. Now, so you've got a little one just here, so you've got a big one, you've got these little ones next to it. You know, you can have one that kind of fits in this sort of shape just here, so it's going to take up this kind of area, and then you want to consider the, you know, this sort of area back over here. So it's branching off, you know, we want areas, you know, sort of different kind of lengths, different sort of shapes, so you don't know area to kind of feel too blank, like we see here, we're looking at it now, you can tell this area feels blank, and this area feels like there's way too much space over here. So what I'm going to do is just create one over here. So I'm going to create a little overturn. It's going to loop just here. It's 
It's gonna loop out. I might create a little, little bump loop. So I've done over here, so I'm gonna create this curve down here. It's gonna loop around. And this one kind of curve around this sort of shape. And this one I'm gonna curve up. Curve down. I'm gonna kind of split this one too. So it's gonna have quite a big sort of drip. And it's gonna curve up and bump around this bit. So then look here, and the side of an area is sort of like feel a little bit too kind of bland. If this area is kind of feel like I need a little bit more. So I feel like this area does over here. But one day, I'm not rather than using the actual petals, I'm going to start using the leaves to branch out from here. Now, leaves can be any sort of shape you want. Um, sometimes it's nice to have the kind of three point ones, where you have like three points like this. You know, sometimes it's nice just to have the ones. I'm going to use a mix of both. So, what I'm going to do, you basically create this nice curve like this, curve it back. And to create a three point, you then basically create one that comes out the outside and curves off roughly the inside part. And again, just there, curves out that way. And then you ignore these lines in the middle. Now what you can do, I'm going to bring a simple line down the center, down the center, and I might do a few little flick lines as we sort of come to those areas. This one over here is going to be fairly simple. It's going to be two curved lines like this. It's going to take up the area. And again, just look at it and just kind of feel where it feels a bit kind of blank, where it kind of feels like it needs something else. So I'm looking at it and I feel like you know, it needs something in this area. It feels a little bit bland. And just over here, I feel like it needs something just here. So I'm going to create a little kind of three point one just there. And then again, maybe just up here, because that one might go quite nice there. So once you've got this done, it's the basic overall kind of shape kind of built up, and then you kind of start adding your little extras. You don't have to add extras, but the extras really do tend to bring it to life. So what I'm gonna do is create these little kind of sort of winds that are gonna come off the inside. So you're gonna create a little kind of loop like this, and then you're gonna bring your line back. You're gonna be very close together. I'm gonna create a few of these just kind of sitting around, and they're gonna be either like sort of curve shape or little kind of edge sort of shapes. You know, you can kind of put them in wherever you kind of want, you know, really, they're just nice little details. You know, sometimes it can be outside of shape if you want as well, don't necessarily have to put on the inside. You know, it generally looks nice when inside, but it don't have to be. I'm just sort of just making a point that you want to be wherever you kind of feel like you want it to be. And once you've kind of got your shape sort of roughly where you want it, I'm going to go into my Sharpie now. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to do every single line with a Sharpie. So I'm going to use a mix of like bold lines and smaller lines. And it's going to really kind of give it a really nice kind of vibe to it. It's going to make sure certain things stand out more and certain things be a bit more subtle. And it's going to make it really kind of beautiful that way. So I'm going to start off with the front bit, so it's going to curve around like this. I'm going to curve this line in here, like so. So that's our base one, remember? So you've got your base, and once you've got your base, I'm going to create this curve coming up. I've got a second one just here, and this one just over here. Remember, this one's set in front of this, so I'm going to do this one second. And then this one sits behind this one, so I'm going to do this one next. You don't necessarily have to do an order, but I think sometimes it just helps, so you don't actually make any mistakes and kind of put so one over an area that you don't particularly want it to be over. So you see you've got this nice little shape here. It's all kind of following that sort of curved shape, that circular shape, but it all kind of like surrounds it. Once you've done that, I'm gonna create my next one over here, turn just here. If any of your little wine bits go over areas, so I said this curves over here and it went over this line, then make sure you just kind of leave that little gap, you know, in between it. Um, I don't think I've done that on any of these, so I don't have to worry about that. You know, sometimes it's nice not to do it, so you don't have to worry about getting those where you kind of Want them to be. So I've got this nice little bump shape just coming out of here. But remember that little overturn just here, so I'm going to create a little loop just on the inside part. Now sometimes it's nice to have two overturns on one bit. Sometimes it's nice just to have one. I kind of play around with them, and what you can do, I'm going to do one here. It's going to break the kind of rule I've got. I've got this nice smooth edge, but it's going to break it. You can kind of bring to a little point if you want on the edge, and then sort of curve again. You know you can do that if you want to break out the pattern. You can have multiple ones of those. You know, it's just another little way of kind of varying it up and kind of personalizing it. You know, you can change how you do these curves, where you got one nice smooth curve. You can have a way kind of bump, bump, bump. You can have all these lines come up to like a little bit finer point and come back, you know, so it's like a really long kind of edge to them. You can have the edge kind of curving off if you want. You know, it's those little details you can really use to kind of sort of personalize it and customize it. Now, a lot of time people kind of get sort of worried about what to do. Like again here, you know, on this outside bit here, I've created this curve around. Now, rather than coming to an edge where it kind of curves into it, I've created this separate and then I'm going to create the top part that's kind of bumping off. And again, it's these little details that can really kind of sort of change it and make a design. Now these little loops in the inside part, you know, another nice little characteristic that you can add or leave out. I'm just kind of giving you guys as many options as I can in one sort of design really without making it look too overly odd. You know, because if you start adding too many sort of like, you know, designs in there and too many what I call like, you know, rules, you know, like here, putting this in here, be like one rule, I'm going to have that a few times throughout the image. You know, having a curve like this is another rule. If you add too many of those, sometimes it makes it feel a bit too over complex and overpowers the design. 
So I'm putting as many as I can without making it kind of feel like it's um, overworking it and overcomplicating it. It's a nice curved bump just here. You know, sometimes it's nice to have sort of three in one sort of like smooth lines, kind of sort of bumps it up. I tend not to have too many of those where everything's on the same level, but again, it's another way you can kind of do it. Create this curve to a point, create a loop down. Put a loop on the outside. So see, so you've got this nice kind of sort of structure to this bit now. And the inside part details here, I'm gonna be using a thin liner. And what I'm gonna use the bold line for is the outline of the flowers, uh, sorry, the leaves. So I'm gonna create a curve there. Cause like I said, I'm sort of done those, and I'm just ignoring those little inside lines that I've done before. Now I'm leaving my fit early, it's very basic. You can do little overturns, you can sort of bend them up, twist them around, make them more kind of neo-traditional if you want. Um, these ones are keeping fairly simple. Sometimes the more simple you keep it, sometimes the better it is. You know, sometimes less is more. You know, it's very easy to kind of overcomplicate a design and sometimes overcomplicating it can ruin it. So don't be afraid to sort of go simple with it. You know, simple is also really nice. You know, it's, it's not making it any less, you know, sometimes it's making it more. So once you've got your big bold outline done, you can come down to a thinner liner. I'm gonna use um, a Unipin fine liner for this. I'm not gonna use this one though, because this one's kind of a bit low. I'm gonna use this one over here. So this one's a 0 0.8, so it's still a bit chunky, but it's not as chunky as what say the Sharpie is. So you're gonna see a very, a very um, obvious difference between the line whips. So I'm gonna start off with these circles on the inside. What I tend to do is just have the circle kind of sit in between each one. But each time there's a little halfway gap, just kind of connecting it that way. And just build one off one until you kind of feel like you have enough in there. You know, it's not as like a set number and you can do lots of different kind of patterns for these. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the circles. The circle is just a really nice, easy, simple way of doing it. You know, I think it looks really effective. Bring these little line details here. So I'm gonna loop this around. I'm gonna get to the edge, I'm gonna create this little kind of loop section just here. So I'm gonna loop it around and then have my second line just coming in. Leave a little even sort of gap between them, like so. Leave that around there. Let's curve this one around this way. Get this nice curve down the bottom. And just keep that kind of pattern going. Like so. Now I said add as many a few as you want, you know, there's no sort of golden limit to it. So once you've got done, I'm going to be nice, the little details inside the uh, leaf areas and a few little line details I'm going to show as well throughout the peony flower. So this flower, I'm going to bring this line down the centre. This one going to be this line coming down the centre. Left these ones kind of matching up, say roughly about the bottom part, just here. So it is pretty much for all of these. And what you can do is add little extra lines. I'm gonna add a couple in there just so you kind of see. I'm not gonna to add too many though. So coming from like you know, a certain angle, I'm gonna curve this around and aim this towards the bottom. And coming a bit higher, I'm gonna do the same and just aim it down towards the bottom. You know, it just gives this really nice kind of elongated kind of feel to the edge, uh, the edges. I'm only gonna do that for these ones low, so the single ones. Because sometimes it's nice to have say two variations at least, where you've got two kind of rules that I said before. So like the rule is the single one's gonna have these and these ones are not. these in here just like so and then what we do on the inside part of this I'm gonna bring this little line just around here around here now it's not something you have to do and what you can do you can bring this the whole way on the inside if you want I'm just gonna leave it on the outside edge so where you kind of got an outside edge on the inside areas not on the outside areas so when I have this kind of part I'm not gonna do it on here I'm gonna do it on the overturns 
and these midsections. And then what I'm going to do, when I sort of shade it and colour it, I'm going to do those areas in a different tone. And it's just going to give a really nice, simple effect. It just makes those areas really stand out. You know, it's not something you have to do. Again, it's just giving you guys another option. So when you do yours, you can really sort of just kind of create it how you want to. I'm just going to do it on all those areas. Again, you just create like another rule that's kind of worked throughout the whole design. So I think I've got everything on there. Like so. And what you can do, you can do little flick lines on the inside part of the flowers if you want. I might do it after I colour it though, because I don't want to put too much in there. Sometimes sort of dirty colours a little bit when you colour them. So I've got it done. Just make sure I've got enough time to dry. Um, Sharpie tends to dry almost instantly, especially on certain papers. Like I'm using Bristol board here, so it tends to dry really quick. Um, the Unipin fine liner sometimes takes a little bit longer, so just be gentle. You know, you don't want to sort of smudge it. You know, I might smudge it a little bit just here because I'm being a bit impatient. But um, yeah, just take your time. You know, give enough time to dry. You know, if you like me and just been a little bit impatient with this, just go over it. And I sometimes when I'm really into a design like this, I'm really enjoying it. I just tend to like want to get into it. I hate kind of stopping sometimes midway. You know, it kind of sort of just irritates me a little bit. So I'm enjoying this. It's going quite nice. So I want to crack on with it. So once you rubbed out your pencil work, like so, we can go into shading. So. I'm just going to grab me shaders, I'm going to use me brush markers, my grey tones, and I'm going to mark out here. So I'm going to use ones in there brush markers for these. So you've got the cold tones. You can use whatever you want, you can use pencils, markers, paints, whatever you want. I'm just going to start off using these. So I'm going to put them in grey shades first and then come in with colour afterwards. And there's not going to be too many dark areas. I want to keep this fairly light, so I'm not going to go too dark. I just want to get a little bit of black in the leaves, just on the bases. So it's got a little bit of black just tear across the bottom sections. Like so. And then going through your grey shades, going from your darkest to your lightest, you want to do this. I'm going to go side to side. If you're familiar with my tutorials, you're kind of familiar with this. So we're going to go side to side until it starts to blend. As soon as you see it start to blend, just go down to your next grey. I'm just going to keep bringing that through until we get to our light one and blend it out. Like so. Now I'm doing this on um, Bristol board, uh, which is quite forgiving with markers. If you're using something like, say, printer paper, it's not going to be very forgiving. Um, you might find a bit of bleeding. So. You tend to want to go up pretty quick. But it's a side to side motion, same with watercolors. You want to keep doing a side to side motion. So it's this motion. And just keep going over the top until you sort of blend. You know, you've got lots of markers out there are really good. Like um, Copics are really good, Chameleon pens. You know, unfortunately, not every kind of marker is available in every kind of country and every kind of area. But most countries have all got their sort of own kind of variations. So usually, if you can't get your hands on Copics, you can get your hands on ones in Newton brush markers. And you can't get your hands on those, you can usually get hold of some sort of you know, equivalent to them. But the main thing, you know, what I'm using here is, is basically the al uh, alcohol based markers and the brush markers. So they basically have a brush tip. So you can see the tips are kind of like a little brush. You know, if you're using ones like, say, Pro Markers, you know, they are good, but the problem with Pro Markers, they have a normal sort of nib tip and it makes it much, much harder to blend them out. You know, that's my sort of problem with like um, Pro Markers. You know, the brush markers, that brush tip just makes things so much easier to blend. You know, they're just much more softer. You know, if you're doing areas like bold colours, then pro markers, you know, all the way to go. You know, they're really good for like bold areas. But for areas that are not bold, you don't particularly want that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a few little areas. I'm going to use like a grey tone. I'm going to do like an undershadow bit. So underneath here, so where this sits on top, I'm going to do a bit of shadow just here. I'm going to have this come to a hard edge as well. And what I'm going to do is going to kind of, kind of put it where the shadow will kind of sit normally. So every time there's a bit of shadow kind of underneath, I'm going to add a little bit. So underneath here, just it comes around the back, I'm going to add a little shadow just there. This will cast a little shadow just underneath this little bit. So I'm going to bring shadow across here. Not only 
milk shadow just kind of underneath here just as it kind of comes out again let's just cast your shadow underneath this section just here a little bit just there and a little bit just under, underneath this overturn just here you know, sometimes it's nice you know you just you don't have to do this but just it's a nice little touch kind of gives a little sense of 3d-ness to it without being too much just everywhere that kind of sits underneath you know so a little bit just here you know if you haven't got a great understanding of light then don't worry too much about that you know like i said it's not something you have to do it's just something that looks pretty nice so now that i've done all those colors i'm going to come in with my other colors now so I'm going to start off with, if I can get that out just there. I'm going to start off with red, I think. I'm going to use red as my main bold color for these. So basically, anytime you kind of got this overturn area just here on the back, I'm going to bold in red. Now this is um, very red. It's the same red I use in most of my videos. You know, it's my favorite red to use. You know, it's very bold now, and you're going to notice where I put those little shadows in. You know, any area that I kind of go over with is kind of red, it's going to be a little bit dark underneath where I put that shadow. And that's the reason for putting the uh, grey down first. It just kind of creates like a little base tone, it's going to darken the colour in certain areas. I'm just going to keep it in this, and I'm going to leave that little highlight area we've done. You remember that little sort of tip bit we've done? I'm just leaving that alone. I'm going to come back with a different colour for those areas. Now your flower can be any kind of colour you want, it hasn't got to be red. You know, red's just showing my kind of go-to colour for these sort of ones, but you can do these blue, pink, purple, you know, orange, pretty much any colour other than green. If you're doing green, it's going to look like a cabbage. You know, so maybe avoid green. You know, you might be able to make it work, but um, it's going to be a very, very hard one to work. There's a reason why you don't really see too many of them done green, because they just don't really translate well in green. So you've got a base red around the outside, and like I said, we just left those little highlight areas around the outside parts. Now the inside, I like to have a colour that you kind of sort of, like, you know, um, if it complements it or kind of goes against it. So what I might do for this one, I might flick in possibly some blue, and then I might sort of blend the blue out a little bit. So I'm gonna go for this very kind of soft, kind of pastel kind of blue. This one is called Aqua. And then what I'm going to do, you've probably seen me do it a few times, I really like to do it, but so I'm going to put a little bit of lilac just kind of over the um, blue area. So I'm going to flick the blue out coming this way, and then what I'm going to do is have a little bit of blue, just kind of flick in the other way as well. Just like so. Now, I don't often do the flick technique, unless I'm sort of like getting it out to um, a blend to nothing, which kind of works with this because it's a very kind of light pastel colour, you kind of flick it out and it kind of blends to nothing. Um, if you didn't have a stronger colour, I wouldn't use it that way. I'll go side to side and go down my tones to kind of sort of shade it out. But for this, I quite like doing it. And what you can do, if you want to sort of break up and have again, leave a little kind of space in between, looks quite nice, like this. And leave like a little kind of white highlight strip. You know, it looks quite nice. It's a very simple effect you can do, which um, adds just like another dimension to it. Just keep flying that until you kind of like run out of room. Just flip this in this way. Sorry, normally if I was drawing this normally I'd be sort of twisting my paper around but I'm trying to keep everything nice and at the same angle so you guys can see it clearly. But if you need to flip your paper around, if there's a certain angle you kind of feel a bit uncomfortable to sort of do that, you know, flip your paper around and do it another way. There's always going to be certain angles your wrist doesn't really want to sort of bend and move bits at. So once I've got that done, I'm going to come in with a lilac now. And I'm just going to flick this into the bottom bit. It's just going to darken it just a tiny bit around the outside edge that I want and it's just going to give a slight different tone to the bottom bit to the top bit which is the look I'm after so 
gonna flick that in there. But once I've got that done, I'm gonna get me amber. It's just like a really nice strong yellow tone. I'm gonna colour in my centre part, all those little flowers, all the little sorry, little um circles we've done in yellow. And then one day I'm gonna get a nice turquoise colour. And the turquoise I'm gonna to use to colour in these little stem parts we've done. I like to make sure these are a nice kind of strong colour so they kind of really stand out. So yeah, just get like a nice colour sort of stands out against it. They also do look quite nice when they're black as well. And I often do that. Not done this one, but um, yeah, I like doing that. So now we've got that done. Gonna get my forest green. Bring us up in the leaves. Now I wanna go with the mint green at the top, just to kind of sort of change it up. You know, I often do like into yellow as well, but um, just to kind of change it, I'm gonna have mint green from the top and forest green from the bottom. So I'm gonna flick that in. Come the other way with that. Just keep it enough for each one of these kind of little leaf bits on the outside. Once you've done that, decide which colour I want to do those little kind of highlight strips. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking pink. I'm thinking pink one would be quite nice for these bits. So I'm going to hit these over to pink. A lot of time I hit these areas like a blue or something, and I haven't got too much sort of like blue in there for another part. You know, it's very nice, you know, wherever you, I usually go for the complementary colour, you know, if you're not too sure what it is, um, you know, whenever you sort of do a colour, just kind of Google it, or if you get like a little colour chart. You know, there's always a colour a color that's complementary to the colour you're using. And um, often using that just works really nice. But for this particular one, because I've got the blue around here, I'm going to use pink on those bits. And there we have it, people. That's how you draw a piano flower. I hope that's helped. I hope you like it. You know, make sure you check out my tutorials as well. You've got hundreds on there. And if you can, make sure you subscribe. You know, leave a comment. It really does help these videos out. You know, they can sort of be viewed by either, like, 100 people or by 10,000 people or 100,000 people um, it just goes by how many views it gets and how many comments so yeah if you can it's appreciate if not you know just cheers for watching the video and I hope it helps you guys you know it's not something you have to do just yeah but for now people I'm the Broken Puppet and I'll see you next time peace